Now let's look at an overview of the kind of things we mean by governance. As a community group, you will operate for community benefit for your community as a whole. You may be able to generate income from grants, membership fees, donations or fundraising to support the work of your group. However, you will not be a profit-making organisation with any money made, covering volunteer expenses, but being reinvested in your work as a community organisation. You will have an independent management committee elected by your membership to run the organisation in their interests. And you will need a clear structure with rules on how the group is run. This is called a governing document or a constitution. We can define governance as follows. It's about making sure that the organisation balances its aims and is able to act in ways which are sensible, ethical and legal. It's also about making sure that the way it operates is in the interests of all of its members, not the committee, not sections of its membership, but the community it serves as a whole. So to run your organisation well, you'll need an elected committee willing to work closely together and do the things that need to be done to make the organisation work. A clear purpose and a vision for what you're trying to achieve that's shared by you and by your members. A governing document which sets all of this out and describes the internal democracy of your organisation. And people on the committee willing to take responsibility for getting things done. And you will need to have effective regular meetings with a clear agenda and a note taken at each one. And an annual general meeting where you're accountable to your members, funders and others. This will need an annual report, a chairperson's report, annual accounts and elections. And you will have to have ongoing procedures for managing your group's money to look after the money and to give the people who may give you money the confidence that they can give you more. The basic building block of your organisation's governance is your constitution. Your constitution should always contain a clear statement of your purpose, clarity about who is entitled to be a member and how they join, how your committee is elected and accountable to the wider membership, and how your meetings should be run, in what way members can intervene if they don't like how the organisation is being run and what to do if your organisation is coming to an end and has resources which can be given to other groups with similar aims. Different types of governance will take different legal forms and what matters is that you choose the right one at the right time. If your organisation begins to deliver services, employ staff or, or buy or lease property, there is the potential for you to make legal mistakes Many of the governance options will provide protection for committee members from individual action being taken against you for these mistakes. So it's important that you protect the committee by limiting legal liabilities using the governance options. This is a complex area and the fact sheet and the web page will help you to understand it. You should try to keep it simple for as long as you can and adapt your structures as your group develops, rather than develop the most complex one for all eventualities at an early stage. The Youth Management Committee gets some really good advice about the options available to you in terms of governance. Groups often start on a small scale, operating informally while people decide what it is they want to do. Then they will often become and incorporated associations because these suit small organisations. They have no formal regulation other than to the membership via the constitution. They don't protect the committee members from legal liabilities, so they work best for groups who don't need legal agreements to own or lease property or employ staff. Incorporated organisations, sometimes known as companies limited by guarantee, can limit committee members' liability for decisions or debts. 
they do report to regulators and Companies House or the Scottish Charity Regulator if they're charities, and they're good for organisations who do have legal agreements, contracts, or to provide services and goods. The Scottish Charitable and Corporated Organisation, or SCIO, is a structure exclusive to registered charities in Scotland who operate for community benefit and are regulated by charity law. It is also incorporated with limited liability for its members and trustees, so it is good for organisations who need legal agreements or contracts and also have charitable purposes, or who operate as a social enterprise. Social enterprises generally may make small charges to, to provide services or activities for community benefit, but they reinvest their profits for the benefit of their community, and directors do not make money as individuals. Kicks, as they are known, can be charities and are governed by company law. These are good for organisations who want to trade with a social purpose, where the money raised is used to benefit the community. Becoming a charity has many benefits, but also some challenges in terms of what you can and what you cannot do. This is why it is something that has to be considered carefully before you opt for this choice. We think it can be helpful to think about running your group in terms of four pillars of good governance. These are that you know your purpose from the beginning and keep sight of it as your group develops. That you are clear about the roles and responsibilities within your organisation, how you work together to get things done and develop the skills you need to do it well. That you have effective meetings, which are the core of your organisation, when you come together, take good decisions based on good information, having thought about all of the options and the consequences of those. And keep sight of your values and being accountable to your members and other people who are part of the stakeholders of your group, like your partners and your funders. So running your organisation well needs a good group or committee willing to work together to get things done. That group needs to be accountable to the wider membership through regular dialogue about the issues that matter. There needs to be a clear purpose and rules stated in a constitution. And a clear plan of action to get the things that you talk about wanting to get done happening in reality. And that means that as a group, you need to take action individually and together as a committee and wherever possible involving your wider membership. So the rest of the module will focus on these four pillars of good governance mentioned earlier around the group's purpose, how to run effective meetings, appropriate roles and responsibilities in your group, and how your values affect the way that you work and how you're accountable to your members.